Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. In a statement released by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the Bishops Administrative Committee has outlined actions to address the abuse crisis, including approving the establishment of a third-party confidential reporting system for claims of any abuse by bishops. After meeting with Pope Francis last week, the U.S. Catholic bishops have approved a third-party reporting system for complaints of sexual abuse. It's one of the steps the administrative committee has taken in response to the recent sexual abuse scandal findings. The USCCB stated that the phone and internet hotline will confidentially receive complaints of sexual abuse of minors and adults by bishops, and those complaints will be directed to ecclesiastical and civil authorities. Additionally, the Bishops' Committee on Canonical Affairs and Church Governance will set up policies for those bishops who've been removed from their position or have resigned. They will also set up a code of conduct for bishops when hearing complaints of abuse or negligence. Finally, they've asked lay experts, law enforcement and social services to launch a full investigation of the allegations surrounding Archbishop McCarrick. The USCCB have pledged to care for victims and to allow genuine concern and care for victims replace the fear of scandal. They also stated that to anyone who's been abused, never hesitate to also contact local law enforcement. If you don't feel comfortable for any reason with the church providing help, your diocese can connect you with appropriate community services. The administrative committee said in a statement that this is only a beginning. Consultation with a broad range of concerned parents, experts and other laity along with clergy and religious will yield, it said, additional specific measures to be taken to repair the scandal and restore justice. The committee said they humbly welcome it and are grateful for the assistance of the whole people of God in holding them accountable. In news from around the world, Polish Archbishop Henryk Hoser, who was appointed apostolic visitor to Medjugorje by Pope Francis, has outlined plans for expansion for the shrine, including adding more masses in different languages, recreating the infrastructure, and areas for retreats for young pilgrims who visit the site. In 1981, six young people claimed that Mary appeared to them, and since then, people from all over the world have flocked to the site, including many groups from Western Europe where people are experiencing God's grace. Now networks of pilgrims from many different countries are organizing, meeting and praying together and engaging in their local church communities. With the rising number of mostly young pilgrims and visitors, visitors, lines can be very long and in the summer temperatures can reach over 100 degrees at the shrine's 50 confessionals. Roofing is needed for the main esplanade as well as improved facilities for conferences and charitable work. Since 1981, over 40,000 apparitions have been claimed at Medjugorje. The Pope acknowledged that pilgrims deserve spiritual care and support, but he has expressed misgivings about the continued claims of Marian apparitions. In news from the Vatican, Bono, the lead singer of the Irish band U2, visited the Vatican recently to sign an agreement between his charity, One, and the Scolas Acurentes, an educational charity supported by Pope Francis. One is a campaign and advocacy effort working to end extreme poverty, especially in Africa. One of its current focuses is education for girls and young women. Scolas began in Pope Francis's Archdiocese of Buenos Aires, supporting education in poor neighborhoods by pairing their schools with private schools and institutions in wealthier neighborhoods. While at the Vatican, Bono had a chance to visit with the Pope. Bono has worked for more than 30 years within the philanthropic foundation he co-founded, one, it acts to end extreme poverty for children, and he's traveled to Africa more than once to help. Thus, his gift for the Pope was from this experience. In 1986, yes. at the Ethiopian famine, myself and my wife, Anna, we worked in a feeding station for five weeks, and it broke, broke our heart. The Pope returned the gesture with an olive tree of peace. He said in Buenos Aires, back when he was a priest, it was essential to educate, to instill peace. They affectionately said goodbye, and the Pope asked the singer something that's not very unusual. Later, Bono went to the press room where all the media were waiting for him. He explained his conversation with Pope Francis and said that inevitably the cases of abuse came up. Uh, we also inevitably, having just come from Ireland, we talked about uh, his aghast, his, his, his feeling that he had his, excuse me, we talked about the Pope's... Um, feelings about what has happened in the church and I 
I explained how you know it looks to some people like the the, the abusers are being uh, more protected than the victims, and he you can see the pain in his face, and um, I felt he was sincere, and um, I think he's an extraordinary man for extraordinary times. And finally, in the news, at a news conference at the New York Catholic Center, Cardinal Timothy Dolan introduced former federal judge Barbara S. Jones to be his first special counsel and independent reviewer. The cardinal said Jones will have complete access to records, personnel, and himself to conduct an independent, scrupulous review of how the archdiocese deals with accusations of alleged abuse of a young person by a priest, deacon, or bishop. Jones said that her and her team at Bracewell, an international law firm, will have unfettered access to examine existing protocols and identify potential deficiencies or non-compliance to the Cardinal. Jones said she would not have accepted the job if the Cardinal had not promised to take prompt action on her recommendations. Jones is a former prosecutor and assistant U.S. attorney who served 16 years as a judge in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Elson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.